the sixth extinction. Will we have the fortitude to change as we face the abyss? Hunted, exploited, poisoned, and forced to live in increasingly confined spaces. We're talking about animals, regardless of their species. Emotionally connected living organisms such as mammals and vertebrates, as well as grasshoppers, spiders, and ants are all on the verge of extinction. Similarly, all environmental indicators are screaming at us that we are on the verge of a global catastrophe, or to be more specific, toward the sixth mass extinction. Follow us to learn more. We just offer a few examples, and they are not even among the most problematic, because, as we will see, the absence of insects, which serve as food for birds, is far more serious than the disappearance of more emotionally engaging animals such as wolves or whales. But it's also important to make an impression on those who are paying attention, right? Okay, in less than a century, Africa's elephant population has plummeted from 12 million to 415,000 individuals, according to the most recent census in 2019. The African lion exists in only 10% of its historical habitat, and the population has declined by 90% in 100 years, from 200,000 to less than 20,000 individuals. Each year, bottom trawling and indiscriminate fishing kill over 300,000 whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Similarly, each year, around 400,000 marine turtles become entangled in bottom trawling nets, with over 150,000 of them dying. Experts estimate that there are now less than 3,000 wild tigers, a figure that is steadily declining and constitutes a major threat to the species. Three subspecies became extinct between 1940 and 1980, the Bali tiger, the Javan tiger, and the Caspian tiger. According to a government estimate, there are likely just 1,411 tigers left in India, which has historically been considered the principal tiger habitat. It is estimated that 95% of wild tigers have died off in the last century. Then there's everything else, a jumbled collection of creatures, insects, and plants that, while not as well known as those named above, are at the heart of the problem. When a species becomes extinct, what sound does it make? Apparently, none, given the terrible rates of extinction that exist now. To be more specific, the extinction of animal and plant species produces a sound, an alarm cry that few seem to be able to hear. Those who listen to and strive to magnify that cry every day estimate that the present rate of biodiversity loss is at least 1,000 times greater than average. A normalcy that, as we all know, anticipated extinction, but not on this scale. Extinction is a fundamental natural process that plays an important role in the great game of life's evolution on Earth. Living species differentiate from one another, reproduce, thrive, and eventually become extinct when something in the environment changes and they are no longer fit to live, leaving an empty place, the ecological niche, for someone else to fill. Extinction has thus always existed and will always exist, and given Earth's extensive history of life over 4 billion years, it is plausible to believe that 99.9% .9 of all species that have ever lived on our planet have already become extinct. Someone has even attempted to compute the number of distinct animals that have existed and subsequently gone extinct on Earth up to the present day, an impossible quantity to calculate, although it could be between 5 and 50 billion different species. These percentages are astonishing when compared to the estimated tens of millions of animal and plant species on Earth, only around 1.9% of which have been formally described by science. Extinction is thus the inherent fate of every living species, and it will affect everyone, even Homo sapiens, sooner or later. Each species is born with an expiration date that, on average, runs between 5 and 10 million years. These figures vary substantially based on the taxonomic groups studied, the degree of specialization, and the extent of their habitat. For example, the typical lifespan of a mammal species like ours is roughly 1 or 2 million years, whereas invertebrates, particularly marine invertebrates, can live up to 11 million years. 
Extinction occurs when the last member representing a species dies, but there is also a programmed sort of extinction known as functional extinction, which is attributed to an organism whose number is so tiny that it can no longer recover. And perhaps the most heartbreaking extinction is the one that can no longer be averted. Extinction usually occurs slowly and gradually, but from time to time, a huge number of living species can abruptly die collectively within a relatively short time on a geological scale due to catastrophic global occurrences. These extraordinary catastrophes are known as mass extinctions, and they involve at least 75% of the living species on the Earth at the time. It has happened at least five times in Earth's history. The most devastating was the Permian extinction about 250 million years ago, when over 90% of known marine species went extinct and life was on the verge of extinction. The last and most famous was the Cretaceous extinction, which occurred approximately 66 million years ago and resulted in the extinction of practically all dinosaurs save birds due to the impact of a meteorite on Earth. Extinction isn't intrinsically terrible from an ecological sense, unless it's your own species that becomes extinct, because it opens up the field for new life forms. In fact, catastrophic extinction is nearly invariably followed by quick and explosive adaptive radiation, which is the rapid evolution and diversity of new species from the few survivors. We are here today because of that meteorite and a slew of other fortunate coincidences. In fact, the extinction of most dinosaurs paved the way for us, the new rulers of the Earth. Until now, that is. More and more species have gone extinct in recent ages. All experts concur that we are currently experiencing the sixth mass extinction. This time, though, it is not the result of a meteorite strike or a rapid glacier. The calamity that is causing the extinction of hundreds of species every year has a name and a surname, Homo sapiens. Human actions have had an extremely significant and invasive impact on biodiversity since the creation of agriculture. The rate at which living species are becoming extinct has reached astounding proportions, far beyond normal extinction rates. It appears that the situation has worsened in the last 50 years. Do you need any more numbers? Okay, human activity has profoundly changed around 75% of terrestrial and 66% of marine habitats. Agricultural or livestock production now accounts for more than one-third of the Earth's land area and approximately 75% of freshwater resources. The area of urban areas has more than tripled in the previous 30 years. Since 1980, plastic pollution has increased tenfold. Every year, we generate 300 million tons of plastic, with around 8 million tons ending up in the seas and oceans. Straws, bags, and other artifacts contribute to the approximately 150 million tons of rubbish that is currently fouling marine habitats. It creates a virtual ocean of plastic, which takes years, if not millennia, to disintegrate and kills millions of marine species through ingestion and suffocation. Every year, 170 billion animals are butchered, which equates to 5,000 per second. Pesticides, fertilizers, and trash from intensive livestock production are all found in agricultural runoff. Every year, almost 5 million tons of pesticides are sprayed on crops, with half of them ending up in the sea via rivers. In addition, each year, 500 million tons of heavy metals, solvents, toxic sludge, and other industrial waste are discharged into the world seas. A terrible circumstance, a scenario that, as someone once remarked, if you take one brick out of a wall, nothing happens, but if you take too many bricks out, the house will collapse. Each time the Earth loses a species, the overall survival capacity of the environment decreases and humanity will bear the consequences because we rely on a stable climate, fresh water, insects crucial for agriculture and disease control, pollinators, and other aspects tied to a functioning ecosystem. It is estimated that at least 900 distinct species have gone extinct since 1500, including 85 mammals, 159 birds, 35 amphibians, and 80 fish. These are conservative projections that could change in the near future.
Some of the key causes of biodiversity loss that may be directly attributable to human actions are habitat destruction, pollution, and overexploitation. Are you implying that we overlooked climate change as one of the causes? To be clear, we believe that global warming is a giant media hoax, a factor that is mainly irrelevant to the ecological catastrophe. Species may shift as a result of climate change, but they do not necessarily disappear in large numbers. Politics and economic interests, on the other hand, ensure that attention is deflected from the true cause, which is the reckless and selfish exploitation of environmental resources. Billions of billions are being allocated to an ineffective CO2 struggle, rewarding politicians and multinational corporations under the pretense of moving to a green economy while brazenly continuing to destroy ecosystems and murder animals. We have already lost numerous valuable pieces of biodiversity as a result of human activity. These extinct species should act as a wake-up call to all of humanity that we must alter course as soon as possible to avoid irreversible damage to ecosystems and our future. So let's take a deeper look at some of the notable species that have gone extinct due to human intervention. The thylacine, sometimes known as the Tasmanian wolf, became extinct in 1936. The thylacine, often known as the Tasmanian tiger because to the dark transverse stripes on its back, was a carnivorous marsupial found in Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea. It was Australia's largest carnivore and the apex predator in the food chain. Despite its striking resemblance to dogs, particularly in skull shape, the last common ancestor of canids and thylacines dates back roughly 160 million years, making it one of the most prominent cases of evolutionary convergence. The thylacine thrived in Tasmania until the 1930s after disappearing in New Guinea and then in Australia. It was thought to be injurious to cattle and was so gradually eradicated by settlers. This combined with habitat loss and competition from the dingo ensured its demise. The last specimen spotted in the wild was in 1930, and the thylacine named Benjamin died in captivity in Hobart Zoo, Tasmania, in 1936. The western black rhinoceros was declared extinct in 2006. The western black rhinoceros, a black rhinoceros subspecies, was previously common in southeast Africa. It was intensively hunted in the early 20th century, spurring repopulation efforts as early as the 1930s. However, these attempts were futile. By 1980, there were only a few hundred western black rhinoceros left, and by 2000, there were only 10. In 2006, the subspecies was officially declared extinct. Northern white rhinoceros, extinct since 2018. A subspecies of the white rhinoceros, the northern white rhinoceros, lived in Uganda, Chad, Sudan, sections of the Central African Republic, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Between 1970 and 1980, the population dropped from 500 to only 15. Poachers assassinated the last four free individuals in 2005. The Barbary lion was declared extinct in 1942. The Barbary lion, also known as the Atlas lion due to its natural environment in North Africa's Atlas Mountains, was distinguished by its long chestnut mane that extended over the shoulder and down to the belly. The last specimen was killed in Morocco in 1942. The California grizzly bear has been declared extinct since 1924. The California grizzly bear, which was extensively displayed on American flags, has been extinct for about 100 years, with no evidence or even images of this species extant. It was hunted in the early 1920s because it was deemed a menace to urbanization, and it was later used for bullfighting. The absence of people of reproductive age resulted in its extinction within a few years. The quagga has been extinct since 1883. The quagga was historically common in a region roughly corresponding to modern-day South Africa. It had a zebra-like coat with white and brown stripes on the muzzle, neck, and front of the body. It appears to have a more placid demeanor than the zebra, which is currently considered a subspecies rather than a separate species. 
colonists hunted the quagga for its flesh and hides, as well as to conserve pastures for domestic animals. These animals will never be seen again, not because of environmental balance, but because of humanity's greed, carelessness, and cruelty. Nature will take around 5 million years to recover from the extinctions caused by humans, but it will never bring back these specific animal species. The images of the last thylacine, a melancholy prisoner in a cage, will long be a reminder of our folly and recklessness. Alright everyone, here's where the video ends. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.